Hey everyone, this video will be on the mass defect and binding energy. When scientists calculate the mass of the atom, they realize that it is smaller than the total mass of particles that make up the atom. In other words, the combined mass of protons, neutrons, and electrons were found to be heavier than the actual mass of the atom. Here's an example. The combined mass of particles in a hydrogen 2 atom is 2.16490 atomic mass units, AMU, while its actual mass is slightly smaller, 2.014102 AMU. This is also true for a nucleus. The combined mass of the nucleons in the nucleus is also greater than the actual mass of the nucleus, which is also known as the nuclear mass. The difference in mass between the atom or nucleus and its constituents is known as the mass defect. The reason why we have this mass defect is because the mass is partially converted into energy when an atom or nucleus is being formed. This energy is known as binding energy. The amount of binding energy formed from the mass defect can be calculated using the mass and energy equivalence principle, E equals mc squared. Binding energy is the energy absorbed when an atom or nucleus is broken apart. This should make sense because energy is required to break the attractive forces present in an atom. Conversely, Binding energy is released when an atom or nucleus is being formed. For example, if this particular nucleus has a binding energy of 0.1 mega electron volts, when it is broken apart, it will absorb 0.1 MeV of energy to form the constituent nucleons in a nucleus. And when the nucleus is reformed from these four particles, the same amount of energy, so 0.1 MeV, is released. So what you need to know is that binding energy is absorbed when a nucleus or atom is broken apart and the same amount of energy is released when the nucleus or atom is being formed. Let's look at a more detailed example of calculating the binding energy. We have a carbon-12 nucleus. The total nuclear mass is always lower than the additive masses of the nucleons. And in a carbon-12 nucleus, because it's got an atomic number of 6, it has 6 protons and 6 neutrons. By adding the masses of these nucleons together, we can find the mass of the nucleons. The actual mass of the carbon-12 nucleus is 12 atomic mass units. We can convert this into kilograms by timesing the conversion. As you can see here, the mass of the nucleus itself is slightly smaller than the mass of the nucleons combined together. So if we find the mass defect by subtracting and find the difference between the two masses, and times in this by the speed of light squared, we can then calculate the binding energy of the carbon-12 nucleus in joules. The binding energy of nucleides depends on their composition. This is why binding energy varies among nucleides. The binding energy per nucleon, that is the binding energy divided by the total number of nucleons in a nucleus, also varies among nucleides. This graph on the right-hand side shows the difference in binding energy per nucleon among different nucleides. What you should know is that nickel and iron are considered as the most stable nucleides because they have the greatest binding energy. This is also the reason why iron is the heaviest element produced by nuclear fusion in stars. Elements larger than iron have lower binding energy, and we'll look at what difference this makes in a moment. For any type of transmutation processes, whether it's radioactive decay, nuclear fusion, or nuclear fission, the binding energies of reactants and products are always different. When the binding energy of the products is greater than the reactants, the transmutation is said to be exothermic, which means it releases energy. In this example, the binding energies of these two nucleides combined is 0.1 mega electron volts, while the product formed from the fusion of these two nucleides is 0.2 MbV. 0.1 MbV of binding energy means we need to put in 0.1 MeV to break apart the nucleons in these two nucleides before we can form the product. When the particles are broken, they can then form the product and this releases the binding energy of the product, which is 0.2 MeV. As you can see, we have more energy being released than energy going into the reaction when we are breaking apart the reactants. This results in a net energy being released, that is 0.1 MeV. Hence, this reaction is exothermic. Let's look at what happens when the binding energy of the product is less than the binding energy of the reactants. 
In this example, 0.2 MeV of binding energy is needed to break apart these two nucleides. When the product nucleus is formed, its binding energy, 0.1 MeV, is released. This time, we have more energy going into the system and less coming out of the reaction. This results in the net energy of 0.1 MeV being absorbed by the reaction. This is why when the binding energy of the products is less than the binding energy of the reactant, the reaction or transmutation absorbs energy and is considered as endothermic. This concludes the video on mass defect and binding energy.